The Holy Tales. Today's story is about a woman called Ruth. Um, this name sounds familiar. Yes, it is. Ruth is a very important woman character in the Bible. It is important that you know of her story. Yippee, Holy! Go on with the story and tell us all about Ruth. Okay, so Ruth is a woman of great importance in the Bible. She is known for her loyalty, and she had full faith in God in her heart. Ruth lived in a little village called Maud, and she was a young girl when she got married to a man named Mahlon. Mahlon and his family had moved to Maud because their village had been attacked by a major famine. As soon as Mahlon's family reached Maub, he died because of a severe illness and left behind his wife Naomi with two of their children, Mahlon and Chilion. When Mahlon grew up, he was married to Ruth while Chilion was married to Oprah. Ten years after they got married, both Mahlon and Chilion died, leaving behind Naomi, Ruth and Oprah all alone. With no one left alive in her life, Naomi decided to go to Bethlehem. She said to her daughters-in-law, There's no one left in my family anymore apart from the two of you. I have decided to go to Bethlehem. Two of you can leave me and go wherever you want to go. You can go back to your own families if that makes you happy. Hearing this, Oprah decided to go back to her family. She knew if she went to Bethlehem with Naomi, her life would be even more difficult. But to Naomi's surprise, Ruth said, Don't ever ask me to leave. Where you go, I go. Where you stay, I will stay with you. Your friends will be my friends, and your God will be my God. Naomi was happy in her heart of hearts to hear this. The journey to Bethlehem was a long and a difficult one, and she couldn't have made it alone. Also, she loved Ruth for her clean and pure heart. So, Oprah left for her home, and Naomi and Ruth left together for Bethlehem to live the rest of their lives. Shortly after arriving, Ruth met a rich landowner in Bethlehem named Boaz. She started working in his field to provide for herself and Naomi. Her dedication and loyalty towards her work really impressed Boaz and he wanted to marry her. Boaz and Ruth soon got married and Naomi was very happy for them and blessed them with all her heart. Eventually, Naomi gave birth to a son, and they named him Obed. Obed is the grandfather of David, and thus is named as one of the ancestors of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew and in the Gospel of Luke. So, this is the story of Ruth, who was faithful not only to God, but also to Naomi when she was all alone. She was a loyal servant of God, and God blessed her for her loyal and faithful virtues. This makes Ruth one of the most remarkable women of the Bible. Wow! That was a wonderful story, Holy. It was so sweet of Ruth not to leave Naomi alone. Yes, that is why she is known to be the most loyal and the most faithful woman in the Bible. Now, it is time for today's question. What was the name of the rich landowner where Ruth began to work? His name was Boaz, and I earned brownie points. The Holy Tales I'm ready with the story I'm going to tell you today. Yay! I was worried though. What if you weren't? Hehehe. <laughs> All right. Today, I'm going to tell you the story of Hagar. Yippee! It's story time! Hey 
Hagar was a young Egyptian woman who worked as a servant for Abraham and his wife Sarah. She lived in their house and did all the chores that she was asked to do and more. For a long, long time, Sarah couldn't have any children. So, Sarah asked for Hagar's help. And as per the practices of those days, the child which Hagar had would be credited to Sarah as the child's mother. Even though it was Sarah who herself had asked for Hagar's help, Sarah grew jealous of her and upset when Hagar had a son. Angry, she threw Hagar and her son out of her house. Hagar and her son had no place to go. She went across mountains, walked through forests, and finally reached a desert. She was thirsty and exhausted, and so was the baby. She sat down on the ground and cried. Suddenly, in the middle of the desert, an angel appeared to her. The angel said, My child, the Lord has promised a blessing on your son. However, you must name him Ishmael, which means God hears. Hagar was shocked. She finally composed herself and said, The Lord is the only one who sees me. Fourteen long years passed. Ishmael had grown up to be a young boy. Hagar decided to visit Abraham and Sarah. When she went to visit them, she saw Abraham and Sarah had given birth to their own son. Once again, Sarah was very angry with Hagar. She shouted at her and said, We all know why you have come back here with your son. You are here to take a part of whatever Abraham has as your son's rightful inheritance. That is never going to happen. Leave right now and take your son with you. Leave. Once again, Hagar and Ishmael fled to the desert. Before they had left, Abraham had given them a bottle of water and some food for their journey. But soon, that bottle was over. They were almost dying when God sent his angel to her. The angel appeared to her in the desert once again and said, Do not be afraid. God shall protect you and your son. He has heard your crying. Don't you remember God's blessing? Saying this, the angel disappeared. And to Hagar and Ishmael's surprise, spring water appeared in front of them in the middle of the vast desert. Hagar and Ishmael drank water from the spring, and they survived. Ishmael grew up and raised a whole nation. He had many descendants who were divided into 12 tribes just as God had promised. So children, that was the story of Hagar, another remarkable woman of the Bible who was known for her faith in God. That was such a nice story, Holy. Hagar was such a strong woman. Yes, no matter how difficult life became, she never lost faith in God, and God rewarded her for that. Now it's time to win some brownie points. What's today's question, Holy? Well, today's question is, what was Abraham's wife's name? I know! Her name was Sarah! The Holy Tales Well, Freckles, this time I was thinking, why don't we hear the stories of all the remarkable women in the Bible? That would be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, yes. That would be super fun. It's all about girl power. Yeah! All right, then. Gumbo, Tubby, does that sound fun to you, too? Um, yes, Holy. Sounds quite interesting. All right, then. 
Our first story will be about Mary. Mary Magdalene? No. Today we're going to hear the story of Mary, the mother of the Son of God, Jesus. Mary was a maiden who lived in Nazareth, a small town in the city of Galilee. She was betrothed to get married to a young man called Joseph, who was a carpenter. Mary was an obedient servant of the Lord and blindly believed in God. One day, as she was cleaning up her house, an angel of God named Gabriel appeared to her and said, Mary, God has chosen you as the woman who is going to give birth to the Messiah. Mary was scared. Gabriel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will soon bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be the Son of God and the greatest of all. The world will be his kingdom, and there will be no end to it. The faithful, obedient, and trusting servant of God that Mary was, she submitted herself to the Lord's will. She said, Whatever the Lord says, I am the servant of the Lord. But how will I bear a son? And the angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of God will overshadow you, and your holy child shall be born. The earth will have with them the Son of God. Saying this, Gabriel left. Hearing this news, Mary immediately went to Elizabeth. Elizabeth was the wife of Zechariah, who was destined to give birth to John the Baptist. When Elizabeth heard the news from Mary, the baby in Elizabeth's womb leapt in glory, and soon Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. She said, You are the blessed one among all the women, Mary, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why did the Lord shower so much favor on me, that the mother of my Lord should come to visit me? The moment I heard your news with my ears, the baby inside me leapt in joy. The Lord has blessed you, Mary, for the immense faith you have in the Lord. Few days passed, and one night Joseph had a dream. An angel appeared to him and guided him to go to Bethlehem with Mary. The journey was long and very tiring for Mary. Once they reached Bethlehem, it was time for Mary to give birth to the Son of God. Soon, Mary gave birth to baby Jesus in a manger, where all the animals bowed down at the sight of the baby. It is believed that Mary was Jesus' first disciple. When Jesus was still very young, they were invited to a wedding at Cana in Galilee. The wine at the wedding had run out, so Mary came up to Jesus and said, They have no wine. To this, Jesus replied very gently, What can I do, mother? My hour has not come yet. Mary understood what Jesus was trying to say. She believed in his words and said to the servants, Do as he says. That's when Mary became Jesus' very first disciple. She had faith in him as the Son of God. Jesus was not the only child of Mary. Mary gave birth to other children also, who were addressed as Jesus' brothers in many places in the Bible. The day Jesus was to be crucified, Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Mary's sister, all of them, stood next to Jesus' cross. When Jesus saw his mother, he looked at John, his most loved disciple, and said, Behold your mother! Then he looked at his mother and said, Behold your son! From that moment onward, John took Mary to his home and loved her no less than his own mother. After Jesus' death, Mary, the mother of Jesus, along with his twelve disciples and the other women, 
pray together for the Spirit in Jerusalem. They committed their lives to devotion and prayer. So, Mary of Nazareth was one of the most important women of the Bible as she gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Wow! That's a wonderful story, Holy! Thank you for telling us all about Mary, the mother of Jesus. I'm glad you liked it. Now it's time to see who wins today's brownie points. Today's question is, who did Mary go to visit soon after she was visited by the angel? I know, Elizabeth, her cousin, who is also the mother of John the Baptist. Well done, Freckles. So you win today's brownie points. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. Come back soon. I'll be waiting. Bye, kids. Bye, Bye Holly. Holly. To watch more videos, please subscribe. Hidden plants and trees. On the fourth day, God created the sun to shine in the day, the moon and stars to come out at night. One day, Moses went to Mount Horeb with his sheep. There, God appeared to him as a flame of fire in a bush. Since there was no room anywhere else, they decided to spend the night in a stable. Here, Mary had her baby, Jesus. She wrapped him in a blanket and put him to sleep. He's got the home.